Hi, Dara. Oh my God, the hair, the background, the fit. It's a 10 out of 10 for me. Thank you. Very much it is. <laughs> mm hmm. Beat you. Wow. Is it like, like frenemies, like just going, like just talking? Oh, she's a frenemies fan. Okay, kind of. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah. So this week we have on the show a vocal powerhouse. She dances, acts, sings, is all hair and all talent. The sidekick in the first season and now the main character of her own storyline in season two. Everyone, welcome to the show. East High's Dara Renee. <laughs> Net proceeds from this episode will directly benefit the Actors Fund. Make sure you check out the description below and click on their website to find out more. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Your hair is incredible. Um, did you dye it? What's the sitch? Well, actually, I've been trying to like try different colors like every week. So like mm -hmm. last week was red and this week is gray and it's like a hair wax. So I just like put some gel and some hair wax in it. And luckily it came out good. I was really scared. I was like, it could come out either way. She gave me Storm. She gave me Storm. She gave me Marvel. Yes. <laughs> she tried to get She's trying to get cast up. So thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so excited to talk to you. I feel like every member from this cast is just incredible. Before we get jump into the gig of High School Musical, the musical, the series, um, you've been in the gig for a little while. And she's been successful as that. She's been grabbing bags, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. She's been on Disney Channel. Obviously, she does some blackish situation here and there. And now she's grazing us on High School Musical, the musical, the series. You've played like characters that are so like different from one another, which I think is so exciting and fulfilling as an actress. Um, what draws you to a script when you get it on your in your email or as a text? Yes. Um, oh my gosh. Well, um, I haven't done that many things, but you made it sound really good. So <laughs> thank you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I actually um I went out for like the open call for high school musical like when I just moved to California from Baltimore and um I yes. went in and then after I went in luckily I got a call back from that and I was like oh my gosh this is absolutely wild and since then it's just been a dream come true I mean being able to be on Freaky Friday with an amazing cast and then Blackish and now high school musical oh my gosh I'm just I'm so grateful and like I I couldn't feel I mean I just feel so honored to just be able to do such amazing roles and most of my roles are like so different so yeah <laughs> she said booked and busy yes <laughs> yes <laughs> that's what happens when we're talented yep mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> <laughs> of course so high school musical the musical the series of course you went to the casting call which is like a very when you've been to a Disney casting call it is it is a whole situation it's a whole situation but you landed the role of Courtney after auditioning for multiple parts. Talk to me about like your process of walking in. She was a one episode character. They were like, that is too much talent to contain to one episode. And they made you a bigger part. How was that like? Walk me through the process. Um, first of all, I still can't believe they did that. I'm so <laughs> grateful. I was like, wait, what? Um, but no, um, yeah, so I auditioned for every um I think every like girl student role, like um, I auditioned for Gina um, and Ashlyn. And then they were like, you know, you feel more like a Courtney. And I could tell when I was going in for those characters, they were like, uh, <laughs> I knew they already knew who they wanted. So I was like, all right, I'm probably like, I really thought I wasn't going to book it. I was like, yeah, yeah. Book this. <laughs> so then they were like, I want you to read Courtney. Um, the script isn't all the way um, finished yet. So just like improv if you want to. And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, of course. And they were like, so she is only going to be in one episode. So and I was like, you know what? I'm totally down to go for it. Yeah. And I, I mean, I was down to even play a tree in the Me. production. So mm -hmm. I was like, whatever you guys need. <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah. So, so um, I went for it and I did it. And um, I had a chemistry read with Queen Olivia and she was the sweetest person and we just vibed. And um, then they were like, um, actually, it's a series regular. And it's it's so funny when I got the call. I just absolutely um, bombed an audition for a movie. And I was like in the parking lot crying. And then I got the call and they were like, yeah, we want me to be a series regular. And I was like, 
Oh, okay. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> she said, this is my moment now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, bags are packed already. <laughs> <laughs> bags are packed, ready to go to Utah. Yeah, for ready? sure. Now, I want to know, I saw that you had some involvement with the song Bop to the Top, that you kind of like were instrumental in that little song. Like, what, talk to me about that. Yeah, well, um, it's it's so it's so interesting. It wasn't originally supposed to be in there. Um, mm. But um, Tim was like, yeah, we want you to, you know, do a little acapella version of Bob to the Top. And I'm over here like, all right, cool. Just send me the track and I'm down. He's like, um, <laughs> come up with that. And, let's do what you do and then and then we could send you the track. But I want to see if you could come up with it. And I was like, oh, OK. Yeah. And so I came up with the composition, which was super fun. I was very scared. Um, but yeah, and then I got to perform it. And it's so funny when I was singing it. Um, Lucas Ryan, who was the original singer of Bob the Top, was walking in about to practice Roll of a Lifetime. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, oh, you did amazing. I was like, you got a lot, but thank you. He was the sweetest person. He wasn't lying. He wasn't lying. No, it was phenomenal. <laughs> of course. You. Monique Coleman, who was in the original High School Musical, she kind of had, like, you, you two had, like, a sister bonding moment. You had a little little situation together. Um, walk me through that. What happened? What did she tell you? Uh, what was the piece of advice? Lay it on us. Uh, first of all, Monique Coleman is an absolute goddess, a queen. She yes. is everything I want to be and more. Um, she is so sweet. And it's, it's so funny. I got a chance to work with her before I booked High School Musical. And... Um, it was for it was for her show called Gimme Mo, which is absolutely magnificent. Go check that out. And she was like, yeah, I want you to be on it. You know, um, I want to do an interview with you because I really related to, you know, coming from Baltimore and moving to L.A. Yes. Um, and she was she was the sweetest person. And then after that, I was like, OK, this is going to be real awkward. But I'm going to ask her for a blessing <laughs> <laughs> to be a wildcat. I was like, queen, I'm a wildcat now. Yeah. Um. Courtney is kind of like Taylor. I just wanted to know if I could have your blessing, if that's not weird. And she was the sweetest person. And she was like, yeah, of course, like keep shining queen. You're absolutely amazing. And she was just so inspirational. And she just continues to support me like throughout everything. And I yes. couldn't have for a better person to look up to. She's absolutely iconic. Amazing. Well, I wish, honestly. Um, and... <laughs> I honestly wish. Um, hey, Monique. Hey, girl. Um, hit me yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> now, in the first season, uh, in the second season of High School Musical, we kind of get to see who Courtney's idols are. You know, we have like an AOC kind of situation. She's very much like manifesting good things for herself in, in season two. Um, do you have any of those like inspirations that stick with you that, you know, push you to thrive for kind of those big opportunities out there? Oh, yes. I mean, I am constantly praying and manifesting every single day. Yes. So um, I feel like that's how I got here. You know, with God's grace, I mean, um, I, I would not be here without the manifestation of all the things <laughs> I dreamed of. Um, but yeah, so I guess some of the dreams that I would have is just, you know, um, Beyonce was a big mm -hmm. one. Or it. Um Gabrielle Union, um, Moni Coleman, of course, mm -hmm. um, Michelle Obama, just like looking up to just such amazing women and um, people in general, just being able to look at look up to people who inspire me and constantly manifest things that they're doing. And hopefully, I don't know, but hopefully I can be able to do what they do when I get older. You're doing it. You're on your way. You're on your way. <laughs> That's what we love to see. Um, Courtney in season one, you know, was written kind of to serve the storyline of Nini. She was kind of like her, her right hand woman, you know, giving her that advice. Um, but in season two, um, the, the the writers really made her like she, she's the leading woman. She's she's, <laughs> she's going, you know, marching to her own drum in this in this season. Um, do you have the, Was there a conversation about like after season one, kind of the writers being like, okay, so. Courtney, season two, um, she's going to serve on everyone. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Of course. <laughs> I must say, you know, season one, I was, you know, like an added character. Like my storyline hadn't really been developed because I was just, you know, put on on the spot, which mm. I'm so grateful for. And season two, um, they were like, yeah, we want to make your part bigger. And I was like, 
wait, wait, what? And they're <laughs> like, yeah, we want to make your party bigger. We want to give you certain things. We want to make you do things that are absolutely amazing. And I was like, oh, I'm so down for this. And every time I read the script, I was like, oh, oh, I'm like living, living like yeah. I'm out here like with a life and like a backstory. I was like, oh, I love to see it. And they did an absolute amazing job. They would always come to me and be like, yeah, so is this okay? How do you feel about this? And I was so excited to be able to just be involved and see what they were doing and that they wanted to make my part bigger. I was like, thank you. I cheered. I cheered. I was like, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Front and center. <laughs> I was like, oh, in the middle. I'm in the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As she should. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> of course. So like season two, okay, we're going to paint the picture because like, everybody's like listening. She's like, wait, hold on. Like she's getting a big part. What's going on? So Courtney <laughs> is, she got a job. And by the way, a good job at that. I don't know what I was doing at 15 folding clothes at American Eagle. <laughs> I really don't know. She <laughs> is working at Larry's um, family's pizza shop. You know, she's very, very much the boss lady uh, up in here. There were, you know, teasing of like another employee that she's kind of like having this little situation with. Um, how important do you think it is, like, especially in the world that we live in now to see a black girl front and centered and kind of taking control of her own life as Courtney is in season two? Oh, 100%. I think it's very important. And um, I feel like I'm so grateful to be able to look to like, you know, so many women and, and be able to be you know that now in season two and i'm so you know it's it's so amazing to have you know that inspiration and to be that inspiration and i just feel like it's very important to have representation and representation matters and mm -hmm. i think that it's, my, it's you know I, one of my things that I want to do and to use my platform is to not only be a part of stuff that puts black women and people of color in the center, but also create things that shows more diversity of all sections and of all circles of life, you know, because I feel like it's very important to build things and to create things that show what the world look like and is an accurate representation of what the world looks like. Yeah. And how fun has it been to kind of just like see Courtney's different sides of her personality because Nini, she can't fall back on Nini anymore. Nini is uh, running her own thing, you know, at that school. <laughs> um, it's absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm so excited that I'm able to explore this side of Courtney, you know, showing her vulnerability and showing that she makes mistakes and is trying new things. And she's absolutely amazing and iconic. And, you know, me, I'm a little goofy. I'm a little awkward. So <laughs> me. Me. <laughs> to play someone who is so like powerful and empowered within herself is absolutely amazing. Amazing. I have to ask a little as a little Haitian Trinidad boy, what's your ethnicity? Um, I am African American, black. All right, cool. I was like, is she Haitian? Because like I feel like we have a bond. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so now there's a new set in season two. Obviously, we have the pizza shop, which serves to the Wildcats kind of like Central Perk served to the cast of friends, you know, on that sitcom. Um, how has it been introducing this new set and your your, a lot of your scenes are in this set now moving forward. So how has it been any behind the scenes secret? Is it a lot? Is it a real actual building? Like what's going on? Okay, um, they built that set from the ground up. I mean, I was like, oh my gosh. And when they showed me, I mean, they they literally handmade every single piece in that set and it's on our soundstage. And I would walk in and I would see like little details of things. I mean, even down to like writing the menus, like was very specific. I mean, our team is absolutely amazing and they did a flawless job building that whole set. It is very big. I don't even think everybody got a chance to see the entire set. It's humongous. Yes. She's big. Yeah, she's big. She's big. <laughs> you said like this the 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 menu. Can you tease us any like little reference that they did in the menu of the pizza stop? Ooh. Uh... <laughs> not me putting on the box. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just, to be honest, I do not remember, but I just know the menu is tight. So. Okay. Okay. Take her word for it, guys. Take her word for it. <laughs> That's amazing. And now Courtney in season two has been teased to have a little romantic interest, you know, going into season two, which we cannot talk too much about. But what has been 
um, fun because, you know, in season one, Nini got to navigate her romantic relationship. And now in season two, Courtney got kind of gets her own um, storyline. How exciting has that been to kind of like open the script each week and kind of see like, oh, this is happening. You know, it's kind of catching up with a girlfriend on what's going on in the tea, you know? <laughs> I absolutely loved it. I mean, getting to open the pages and, you know, see like new stories for Courtney and new adventures. I would be like, oh my gosh, like, it's just me. Like, this is so amazing and so wild and I absolutely love it. And, you know, I can't give one too much about the love thing, but um, in my own personal life, I mean, I've always had issues and struggled <laughs> with it. Um, so I don't know if Courtney's going to have the same issues. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Well, she's an independent woman, too. So, you know, you, you kind of need a good man to kind of, you know, come in and and be worth Courtney's time. Exactly. As Nikki said, if you are a strong woman, you need a strong person beside you because somebody can be like, uh, you know, get a little intimidated by that. Yeah. And we don't want that. We don't want insecure, you know, rise up to the rise up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't, don't get with somebody that's going to put you down. Don't get with somebody that's going to put you down. All y'all out there. Don't get with nobody mm. that's going to put you down to make themselves feel bigger. It's not worth it. Straight up from Dara. Take, take her word for it. Yeah, that's the words of wisdom for the day. Words Thank of you. wisdom. <laughs> so one of the things I find incredible about uh, High School Musical is you guys are all asked to sing live which you know it's not a it's not a typical thing for doing a tv show typically you kind of get to sing to the studio version of the song and of course that implies like so many different things like you can't lose your breath you can't you know stumble on your words you can't uh do a misstep or like miss your blocking any like horror stories from singing <laughs> stuff live um she has a few yeah. <laughs> yes um i really had to learn with that i mean i've always done theater but i guess like you know with everybody i mean i'm used to everybody watching but i don't know it's just like when you the cameras and everything and uh -huh. you know they always got to start over if you mess up i mean in theater it's just like keep going push through keep going but yeah, here, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cut, start over, rewind. So I would be like, oh, I do not want to take any time away from anybody. So I had to go home. I had to practice my songs. I had to make sure everything was on pitch. <sighs> that was hard. Wait, no pitch correction? No pitch. No. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I know, like sometimes when bumps to the top, I went flat and everybody's just being nice. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I, I thought it was like pitch corrected. No, she said natural talent. She, yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> of course. Okay, we have to move on because I, I have so many questions I want to ask you. I'm just like trying to catch up on time. Um, what are you excited for people to see from your contribution to season two of, of the soundtrack? Because I got to listen to one or two songs. Ooh, did you like them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. The one on episode two, I, it's been in my head. I have to like keep myself from not singing it because it's not out yet. But oh, um, I know it by heart already. So yeah, what's, <laughs> what are you excited about? <laughs> <laughs> um, That song too that you're talking about. I'm really mm -hmm. excited for people to see that song. Um, But there's a really good song in episode three that I'm really excited for people to see. And I just feel like this season everyone from the writers of the music to the production to the people singing it everyone just really put their foot in it they really showed the game i mean they they really tore it down they did an amazing job and i'm so glad that you guys get to hear some of the songs because i must say the season one was good it was absolutely amazing it was fantastic season two whew. Just wait. Another game. Another game. Yes. Another game. Another, Another game. game. <laughs> and Larry was like, last. I talked to Larry last month and he was like, no, I'm telling you, like, season two, like, the soundtrack is just like that higher. And I was like, how? But it's That's what like, I yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I don't want to say it's better, but it's definitely. It's, it's very like, it's. It's interesting the way they do it because they do it with such perfection. I mean, going from High School Musical to like Beauty and the Beast, which was like on Broadway, you know, the mm -hmm. production was already just like a different vibe. And I must say they really did it beautifully. And if that's a word, beautifully. Oh, God. It is. It is. Oh, okay. Don't worry. Yes. <laughs> really, they did it perfect. And it's just, it's really going to, it's going to give the theater kids something to bop to and everybody else something to bop to, too, from original music to soundtracks and beauty and the mm -hmm. beast is fantastic oh my god just like like just for episode two i'm gonna drop like three keywords like hair glitter destiny's child yeah! yes 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah she summed it up. You summed it up very well. <laughs> that good? All right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that I found super interesting about researching you is you were on Freaky Friday where you played a little nasty a little bit. You know, she was a uh, not the nicest. Um, and you said that you had a hard time stepping into that character because it's not of your nature. But you did talk about your inspiration from bullying back in the day has really helped you kind of navigate that character and how she would be. Um, I think it's something super relatable uh, that, you know, I know I've exper experienced bullying and I think it's something that a lot of people experience out there. And we got another nasty coming on season two, um, <laughs> ruffling some, fe <laughs> some feathers. Um, so what would be your piece of advice for um, kids out there dealing with bullying? Ooh, um, I know, you know, growing up, it was very hard for me. Like I, I felt like I didn't have anyone or anything to turn to. And mm -hmm. I just felt so alone. And I just want to let everyone out there know that you're not alone. I mean, this is a very common experience, but you just got to keep going, keep pushing and know that you are you for a reason. You are needed here. You deserve mm -hmm. to be here. You are talented. You are loved. I love you. The world is going to love you when they see you. You are fabulous. And keep being you because only you can do you perfectly. And that's on what? That's on pay! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I had to. I'm sorry. I had to. I had to. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I'm glad you loved it. Um, so you mentioned Baltimore a lot. You know, you were born in California from what I'm getting. From what I'm getting. You yeah. grew up in Baltimore because your mom founded a nonprofit performing arts school out there, you know, uh, Maryland. Uh, and you went out to New York for theater and then you moved back to California. But, you know, you make that face. But, I, you know, this whole podcast is about talking with creators and actors and a lot of the time for 20 year olds we're all like we don't know what we're doing really and we're kind of just like figuring it out you you've went through so many different routes what has been that experience of kind of just like finding yourself now in LA and through going through so many roads and how do you think it's it's molded you into the battle you are today <laughs> thank you of course um, <laughs> yeah I mean I've been told no so many times I've been told to change things about myself so many times and it's gotten to a point where I'm just like do I really want to do this I mean people are making me question myself at every single move and I'm constantly being rejected and I'm constantly seeing people that are like better than me or people telling me that they're better than me mm. and I just want to say like you know keep going because eventually you are going to make it I mean you are going Going to get that accomplishment you were just mm -hmm. one failure close to your success i mean in new york oh that was a mess that was absolutely a mess i don't know what i mean that when i tell you an experience humbled me yeah. going to new york humbled me I no <laughs> i needed that and that was the first stop too that was before i went to la that humbled me i was like okay so there is a lot of people out in this world who are talented, amazing, gorgeous, and just giving it 100% every single thing they do. So it's just, I, I just really feel blessed that I'm in the position that I'm in. I mean, that I'll yeah. just. <laughs> I mean, the Addy of whoever said that they're more talented. I just want to talk. I just want to talk. <laughs> Yeah, I I'll talk. give you a couple people. I'll give you a <laughs> we'll talk after this. We'll talk after this. Yeah, <laughs> but that's amazing. But you know, I think like yeah, it's a humbling experience for sure. But I think you go after those experiences, even though they seem scary, intimidating. I guess like you went to New York and you're like, okay, there's a lot of fish in the sea, but and talented fish in the sea at that. So how do I find my place? And luckily for you, it was in East High. I know. And it's, it's such a funny story. I keep going back to New York because that that was that literally was a very pivotal moment in my life. Um, I was auditioning for two Broadway shows Ooh. and um, I <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. It was my first audition. Everybody <laughs> had their books of music. I was like, OK, oh, yeah, Be professional. <laughs> underprepared <laughs> yes <laughs> was, i mean it was an age limit and well it wasn't an age limit it was a height limit and i was like okay i'm mm -hmm. gonna lie and say i'm at like two inches shorter they won't notice they noticed um oh, no. <laughs> i know even an age limit and when i tell you i was the first one to be tapped out i was like okay this hurt and I was just crying in the middle of Times Square and my mom was like okay uh you gotta chill like you know do you really want to do this are you sure you want to do this because this is like a common thing that happens and I was like yeah. 
Let's go to LA. Get New York. Uh, yeah. New York. <laughs> They're just very good there. And in and, and in LA. I don't mean like, you know, better. Well, no, so are you. So are you. <laughs> yeah, that casting director is being like, yeah, we, we could have. Yeah. I need to make sure. <laughs> I <know>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah they were just like yeah we should hit her up yeah soon like that. <laughs> so this topic i want to bring this up i i can't like talk to you without bringing this up what is it like especially in this world that we're in right now to yeah. be a black woman in 2021 but also be a black woman in the entertainment industry um i think it's an ongoing conversation and i think um we have a lot of, you know, black viewers, me being a little mixed kid um, mm. on, on the podcast. And we have a lot of conversation about how it can be really hard. And I feel like anybody could use some words of wisdom. Oh, yes. Um, it is extremely hard. And I feel like it's very important to encourage more representation because there is not enough at all. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. of all tones, of all shades. And I just feel like, you know, we need to work on that. And it has been hard in the industry, especially the auditioning process. I mean, you really see, you know, you know what I mean? Like you really, yeah, Yeah. you see it when you're auditioning and it's just, it's, it's very hard. And, you know, having people constantly, even like, you know, when the show came out, like it was a lot of stuff being commented on my race and I'm too loud and I'm too this and I'm too thick and I'm too, and I was just like, okay. And there was a lot of slurs thrown as well, but uh, that's another topic, but um, I know. And um, I want to talk. I yeah. talk. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh gosh. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, I, I dealt with it a lot and I feel like, you know, most um, black artists in the entertainment business, you know, especially those, you know, colorism is still a ginormous thing. Those of darker shades are experiencing terrible, you know, treatment right now, even through mm-hmm. the audition process, the casting process. And I just feel like hopefully, you know, when I'm able to be in a position, I want to use my platform and use my, you know, access to create more roles for people and to create more, you know, positions of power, you mm-hmm. know, I feel like that's, that's really important right now. And I just want to continue to use my voice to, to, you know, be a voice to those who, you know, are often looked over. Yeah. And I'm, I have to say, I'm super sorry. I had to ex- experience that. I remember yeah. watching season one and I was like, who is this powerhouse <laughs> and why am I not hearing more from her? And then you released music and I was like, wait, hold on. Adding to the playlist. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank <you> so much. <laughs> of so don't forget that. I feel like, you know, sometimes like we give out good advice, but I just want to tell you like how, how I think you're, you're super special. Don't Thank lose that, you. you know, of course. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to play a little game, um, a deep dive on, on Instagram, because I feel like sometimes we post pictures that need a little bit more context. And um, oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> we just need a little more context. Um, yeah. Yes. OK, so I'm going to DM you on Instagram uh, via the okay. Sunset Drive podcast. I'm going to send you some of your pics that I'm like loving fantasy, would love to know the context of what was going on here. Okay, Sounds so you're gonna good. do it. Yes, you're gonna DM me yes. kiss and I gotta Yeah, exactly. Okay, um here we go. Mm-hmm. The contact, like like the like what oh, we were doing. Yeah, what was going on? Okay. So we went to we were in Utah and this was like the first week we were all together and um some I forgot who was it, but they were like, let's just go to the park and let's just like skateboard, let's just roller skate, let's just have a picnic, let's just relax. Mm-hmm. And so we all got together and we all brought snacks, um, very weird snacks to bring <laughs> to a picnic. We all had different favorite foods. I mean, from red vines to like croissants. Yeah. To, I mean, it was just it was a mixture. It was very a much look. It was a pile uh, of yeah. <laughs> It was the first time I really got to, you know, get to know everybody's personality with the exception of Matt. Matt, why weren't you there? But Matt, um, I looked out. I know, but everybody was the sweetest people. And I really was like, oh, I'm really going to fall in love with all these people. They're just such amazing human beings. And I'm so grateful I got to be in a cast with all these wonderfully talented, iconic people. Awesome. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Well, thank you so much, you guys, for tuning in this week for the episode with Dara. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Um, I hope you feel like you made a friend out of Dara and got some good advice and got some good tea on season two. Um, I'm Anthony Smith. And I'm Dara Renee. And you're watching... Oh, oh, no, but you did the Disney Channel, and I like it. And you're watching (laughs) Sunset Drive. (laughs)
That's <laughs> even better. I like it. I like it. Thank you so much for Thank taking you. the time. You're a sweetheart. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I hope you have a great day. You too. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Next week on Disney Channel. I mean, Sunset Drive. I felt like I was being called out. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to say anyone or name any names, but I, I personally know some people that were in a very toxic relationship. Yeah, woohoo! Dating <laughs> advice! <laughs> She's like, I'm not going to lie. You kind of came across as like kind of a douchebag. I think a lot of people just think because I'm from Arkansas, I'm like a Elijah James. How yeah. Sick. Has there been conversation about the potential future of your character? Honestly, I, I, I'm so sorry, but I love me. <laughs> <laughs> this episode was brought to you with the help of Disney Plus.